Joining us now to discuss this and more, Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Florida. He's a key member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thanks very much for joining us. How concerned are you by Israel's strikes on these aid workers? And does the evidence suggest to you that this was, in fact, a targeted attack? Well, thanks, Walt. Thanks for having me. I mean, I agree with President Biden that uh, it's a tragedy. Uh, these families now are broken. I've met with Jose Andres. I used World Food Kitchen during COVID when I was the director of emergency management. I mean, they do amazing work around the world in extremely tough areas. And so this is obviously a mistake by the Israelis. It shouldn't have happened. They're going to have to figure out how to double, triple, quadruple their efforts to make sure nothing like this happens uh, again. Uh, but also, let's be clear, Wolf, this would not have happened had Hamas accepted the ceasefire that has now been on the table that the U.S., the Israelis, and the Qataris have proposed now for the last month that Hamas continues to say no to. Uh, and so you know, I'm hoping we can get to a ceasefire, the six-week ceasefire, in exchange for the hostages. A 10-to-1 swap uh, is what Israel has proposed for, for prisoners. Uh, and yet Hamas continues to say no. But this, this is something that, unfortunately, we've seen uh, happen in war. It happened to us in Iraq. It happened to us in Afghanistan. Um, but these families are irrevocably broken. Empty rooms in their house, empty chairs um, at the dinner table. Uh, there's nothing you could say. Uh, for people who were doing humanitarian work, putting their lives on the line, there's nothing you could say to, to explain this away. Yeah, our deepest condolences to those families and friends. Uh, Congressman, while I have you, I quickly want to turn to some other important events unfolding here in the United States. As you know, the former president, Donald Trump, is talking about what he thinks will happen if he were to lose this year's presidential election in November. Listen to what he says. Listen to this. If we don't win on November 5th, I think our country is going to cease to exist. It could be the last election we ever have. I actually mean that. What's your reaction to that? Well, listen, I, I don't, I, I'm happy to break some news on your show to the American people, but we're still going to have elections, right? The sun is still going to rise and set, okay? It will probably still rain a lot, right? You'll still be able to buy Doritos at your local grocery store. Uh, and to look, Trump's chagrin will probably still have jails. Uh, and so nothing is going to change, right? The fear mongering, all of this stuff needs to end like, oh, the world is going to end if Donald Trump doesn't get reelected. You know, this is where he's at because he's got no no positive vision for the country. He's got no policies for the country. Uh, and his poll numbers are now starting to go down. Joe Biden is doing better ever since the State of the Union. And so I, there is no doubt, Wolf, this is not the end of this nonsense. We're going to see this all the way until November. And if Donald Trump is, if this is where Donald Trump is in April, just wait till we get to September. Yeah, and October and November. Congressman, let me get your thoughts also on an issue very close to all Floridians. This week's decision by the Florida Supreme Court that allows voters to decide this coming fall in November whether to enshrine abortion protections in the state's constitution. President Biden's reelection campaign sees this potentially as an opening to drive people to the polls after losing a series of big races in Florida. Do you think your state is uh, really in play for your party come this November? Yeah, well, look, the decision is a good news, bad news situation. But the bad news is, is that the Supreme Court also said the six week abortion ban in the state of Florida is valid. So that's now the law of the land, six weeks. Uh, a, a woman gets a right to choose, and she doesn't even know that she's pregnant in almost all those cases. But the Supreme Court also said, but we're going to let the voters decide one time. So we have to hit 60 percent. If we don't hit 60 percent to put that in the Constitution, a woman's right to choose, then the six-week abortion ban is here to stay. And so, yes, I think this is an opportunity for the Biden administration as far as voter turnout. Now, Republicans outnumber Democrats in the state by over 800,000 voters. That's been a change since COVID. But this also expands the map, I think, for Joe Biden, because I think now Donald Trump is going to have to spend time and money in Florida that he wasn't uh, anticipating to do. So that helps Joe Biden in Georgia and North Carolina and Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona and Nevada. So, yes, it helps us in Florida, but I think it helps the president expand the map 
uh, in other places. Because, you know, if you've seen the travel schedule, Joe Biden's on the road a lot more than Donald Trump, and Joe Biden has more money to invest in these areas to turn out the vote. Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Florida, thank you very much for that update. Appreciate it very much.